This video is brought to you by Nebula. In March 2022, riots broke out across the Mediterranean island of Corsica after an infamous Corsican national was killed in prison. The unrest reignited the issue of Corsica's status within France and prompted the opening of discussions between the government in Paris and politicians in Corsica about the island's future. Well over a year later, at the end of September, President Emmanuel Macron gave a historic speech in the Corsican Assembly, where he proposed autonomy for the island. So in this video, we'll have a look at the brief history of Corsican nationalism, explain what nationalists want, what Macron has proposed, and why the path from here is still a difficult one. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Let's get started with a quick history lesson on Corsica. Having been under Genoese rule for about five centuries, the island was sold to and then fully annexed by France in 1768, ending a short-lived independent Corsican Republic that had been proclaimed in 1755. From then on, aside from a few short periods of occupation, Corsica has remained a part of France. The 1960s and 70s saw the growth of the modern nationalist movement, against a backdrop of economic challenges and an influx of Algerian-born French nationals who left the country after its independence. 1976 saw the formation of the National Liberation Front of Corsica, or FLNC. Through armed struggle, the militant group, along with various other factions, sought self-rule for Corsica, an end to what it called French colonialism on the island and recognition of the national right of the Corsican people, including things like language, citizenship and culture. Over the next 40 years, the FLNC waged a hostile campaign against France, carrying out hundreds if not thousands of attacks across Corsica, but also in mainland France. These were typically bombings targeting symbols of the French state, including public buildings, banks, police and military sites, holiday homes and more. Officers and politicians were also targets, with the most notable attack taking place in 1998 when Prefect Claude Erignac, the highest ranking French official on the island, was assassinated. After a multi-year manhunt, Corsican nationalist Ivan Colonna was eventually arrested and convicted, having spent years eluding authorities in the Corsican mountains as a goat herder. The armed nationalist movement declined in the 2010s and the FLNC's main faction eventually announced it was giving up its armed struggle in 2014, with a splinter group following suit two years later. During this time, the nationalist political movement was making notable progress. Corsica's regional government had been run by nationalists since 2015. The latest election in 2021 saw nationalist parties win a combined 46 seats out of 63. The growth of Corsican nationalism as a political force shows that the question of Corsica's status remained unanswered, and things then flared up in March 2022. Ivan Colonna, the nationalist jailed for the assassination we mentioned earlier, was attacked by a jihadist inmate in prison, ended up in a coma, and died a few weeks later. The attack sparked an explosion of unrest across Corsica, as Colonna was viewed by some as something of a folk hero. Amid the unrest, France's interior minister visited Corsica and floated the idea of offering autonomy, and a dialogue would soon be opened to explore options for the island's future. More than a year later, in his speech at the end of September, President Macron said it was time to build autonomy for Corsica within the French Republic. It was a historic speech, as it was the first time that a French president had openly endorsed autonomy for Corsica. But he offered little detail, besides saying it won't be an autonomy against the state, nor an autonomy without the state, but an autonomy for Corsica and one within the Republic. And also adding that, to fully anchor Corsica in the Republic and recognise its uniqueness, we need to include Corsica in our constitution. The response from Corsica nationalists was mixed. The more moderate head of Corsica's regional administration, Giles Simeone, whose party favours autonomy, welcomed Macron's speech and highlighted how the president had given no red lines, implying that everything is on the table, but noted that there is still a lot of work ahead. 
The more hardline nationalists, like the head of the separatist Corsica Libera Party, said Macron had offered nothing concrete or historic, with no steps to save our language, no recognition of the Corsican people. With all this talk of autonomy, it's worth briefly looking at exactly what Corsican nationalists have actually been calling for. Among the key things are proper legislative and fiscal power for the Corsican Assembly, recognition of Corsican as a co-official language, inclusion of the notion of the Corsican people in the French constitution, and special residency status for Corsican locals, with the aim of preventing real estate speculation and being priced out by holiday homeowners. On these issues in particular, Macron was fairly vague. He spoke of fiscal measures to tackle housing market speculation, but stayed clear of mentioning anything about residency status, something previously rejected as it would create two classes of citizens. On language, he said that Corsican should be better taught and placed at the heart of Corsican life, with public education promoting bilingualism, but he avoided referring to calls for co-official language status. On legislative autonomy, he mentioned normative powers under the control of the Council of State and the Constitutional Council. Additionally, he stated his support for recognising in the French constitution the specific characteristics of Corsica, with him noting in particular the historic, linguistic and cultural aspects, but steering clear of any mention of the Corsican people. But where do things actually go from here? Well, Macron put the ball in the court of the Corsican Assembly, giving the Assembly's political group six months to reach an agreement on a proposal for constitutional revision. Once presented and deemed acceptable by the government in Paris, it would then need to receive three-fifths approval from a joint session of the National Assembly and Senate in order to actually amend the constitution. So, while Macron has broken a decades-long taboo by endorsing autonomy, the path from here is a tricky one. Firstly, reaching a consensus in the Corsican Assembly will be a challenge, not just between the nationalists and the non-nationalists, but also among nationalist groups which range from those simply seeking greater autonomy and those advocating for independence. As for the French Parliament, resistance can be expected to whatever ends up being proposed. The far-right National Rally, which is the largest individual opposition party in the National Assembly, accused Macron of deconstructing the French nation, while the right-wing Republicans, who dominate the Senate, tend to be reluctant to devolve power to pro-autonomy movements. But while only time will tell where things go from here, the actions taken since March last year do represent progress towards Corsican autonomy. Interestingly, this could impact other regionalist movements in France, such as Brittany, as political analyst Thierry Dominici says, having long been influenced by regionalist movements elsewhere in Europe, Corsica now has become the tip of the spear when it comes to advocating devolved powers, and it could influence regionalists on the French mainland. That's all we have time for today, but if you're the kind of person who wants to dive deeper into the more technical and analytical side of these stories, then you ought to check out The Daily Discussion, where our writing team are let loose to discuss stories just like this one, diving deeper into new stories and unpacking the hidden details that they found fascinating, but they're either too long or too academic to make it into the final script. If you want to check them out, you can find them exclusively on Nebula. And the best news is that Nebula is less than £2 a month and provides you with ad-free and exclusive videos from TLDR and a ton of incredible content from other creators like Johnny Harris, Real Life Law and Legal Eagle. Check it out by clicking on the link in the description and make sure you use our link so they know that you came from us.